Hi everybody, Mr. Lavasser with you. So here's our assignment. This is the assignment for peel pattern and the most common elements found in living things. It's an asynchronous lesson and in it you'll be talking and learning about the peel paragraph pattern. Peel stands for present an idea, explain the idea, give an example of the idea, and then link the idea or particularly the explanation to the example. Our topic is based on the high school life science standard one through six, and that reads construct and revise an explanation. So just read that part again, construct and revise an explanation based on evidence of how carbon, hydrogen, oxygen from sugar molecules may combine with other elements to form amino acids and other large carbon-based molecules. So that means we need to explain the basics of how uh, atoms and elements become molecules and those molecules run living things. So our academic language strategy is we want to be able to begin to recognize when scientists or textbooks are using the peel pattern and we want to be able to write and revise using this peel pattern. I've color coded the P pink, the uh, explanation yellow, the example green and the link blue. And I've asked you to highlight paragraph so that you can recognize this pattern. So look for the peel pattern when you read science texts to improve your comprehension and use the peel pattern when you write explanations in science. You recognize the peel pattern because the first sentence presents a point or an idea. You often take this sentence and you write it from the prompt. So P can stand for present prompt. Be sure to use academic language. The second sentence is an explanation. And that explanation is usually based on a definition. So there'll be is or are in the sentence as the verb. Or the explanation can be uh, naming certain characteristics of that entity. And then in that case, the sentence will have the verbs has or have in it. You may want to elaborate this sentence. You may want to elaborate on your explanation with a second sentence or with another clause. The third sentence is an example. And so if you're doing something from writing, you use textual evidence. You report the evidence that you've gotten from, from the text. If it's based on some concept or topic in science, you give an example of that topic or concept based on it from your memory. And in this sentence, you may also want to add an elaboration to um, make it easier for your reader. In the final sentence, you want to connect the example to the evidence or the um, explanation. So you take the example that you've given and you try and tie it together with the definition or the key characteristics And my friends, this is found in uh, section two of this assignment. So we've got a prompt. Explain the relationship between understanding basic chemistry and learning biology. And here is a peel pattern response to that prompt. Understanding basic chemistry is essential to learning biology. Notice how we've built in some of the language from the prompt, understanding basic chemistry and learning biology. Our second sentence has is and are in it. So there's two parts of that sentence, there's two clauses. Each of them give a definition by using is and are. Chemistry is the study of matter elements and living things are made of matter. Notice also that chemistry was the end of the subject in the first sentence and the end of and biology was the end of the predicate in the second. Notice how they've been those terms have been tied in in the second sentence. The third sentence begins with for example. For example, 94% of the mass of all living things is made of four elements: one carbon, two hydrogen, 
three oxygen, and four nitrogen. So we know that this is our example sentence. And what is it an example of? Well, it's an example of the matter that living things are made from. Notice how the previous sentence ended with the living things. Living things are made of matter. And then the next sentence followed with example of that matter. The fourth sentence should link together the explanation and the example. Learning the key elements for life and macromolecules are made from uh, learning the key elements for life and the macromolecules that are made from those elements unites the study of chemistry and biology. And not only does that tie together the three previous sentences, it also warms us up or gives us some foreshadowing for the next paragraph or the next topic, which will be macromolecules. So let's find that peel pattern. And on your assignment, I've asked you to highlight the, uh, the peel pattern for this paragraph. Highlight, present with pink, explain with yellow, example with green, link with blue. So my friends, one of the key examples of explanations that you need to write in science are explaining how symbols or explaining symbols with words or sometimes you have to take a text a word text and make a symbol out of it and those might be graphs here we have the um, symbolic representations of the element carbon so 12c 12 stands for the number of protons and neutrons together in the nucleus c is the symbol for carbon and below that, we have this model of the atom with the rings around it. Many people think those rings mean where the electrons are. They actually are a graphic representation of how much energy the electrons have. So here what we have is we have two symbols labeled for you to better understand um, the by pictures this carbon atom. Now, let's explain this, these two symbols with a paragraph based on the peel pattern. Scientists use many symbols to communicate or explain scientific topics and concepts. Symbols are representation, often graphs, letters, or numbers that have specific meaning in science. For example, to the left, there are two symbolic representations of the carbon atom, carbon-12, and the Bohr model of the carbon atom. The carbon-12 symbol represents the element carbon with an atomic mass of 12, six protons and six neutrons. While the Bohr model graphically shows the nucleus and the energy levels as rings. So the energy levels are represented in those rings. We'll talk more about that later, that's very important. The last sentence, changing scientific symbols into text is a common explanation in science writing. Notice how that sentence ties together the whole paragraph. Notice that uh, on the rings, carbon has two electrons in the inner ring, and it has four electrons in the second ring. Those electro, the first energy level for any element is filled with two electrons, so carbon is filled. The second energy level for any element can be filled with, with uh, eight electrons. So carbon has four missing electrons, and that's the most that you can have missing um, for many reasons, which we can talk about in chemistry. But what that means is that carbon can make four chemical bonds. So carbon is able to make four bonds with other atoms or with other with carbon other carbon atoms which makes carbon able to make a variety of shapes and a variety of molecules which is what allows for life to happen and let's have a look at that peel pattern and there it is
The last section of this assignment asks you to identify subject and predicate and the chain of ideas between clauses to identify the paragraph's theme. So what we're doing here is we are looking by, by analyzing the text, we're looking to find the theme of the text. So the first sentence, understanding basic chemistry is essential to learning biology. Chemistry is the study of matter, elements, and living things are made of matter. For example, 94% of the mass of living things is made of four elements, one carbon, two hydrogen, three oxygen, and four nitrogen. Learning the key elements for life is in the macromolecules that are made from these elements unites the studies of chemistry and biology. So that was the paragraph that we looked at first. And I'm sure your English teachers have gone over subject and predicate. The subject is what the sentence is talking about, and the predicate is the information about what you're talking about. So we are underlining the subject with red and the predicate with blue. And then we are circling any of these ideas that are used in, the, in a later sentence to make connections be, between our ideas. The verb in a sentence is usually where the clause uh, breaks between the subject and predicate. So the verb in the first sentence is, is where the predicate begins. Understanding basic chemistry, that's the topic. That's the subject of that sentence. What information have they told us about understanding basic chemistry? Well, they've told us that it is essential to learning biology. Subject, understanding basic chemistry. Predicate, information about that subject is essential to learning biology. Now the next sentence, the subject, chemistry. The predicate is the study of matter, which are elements. Notice how a piece of the uh, subject in the first sentence is the, also the subject of the second sentence. That's an important thing to catch when you're skimming science writing. Notice that the, the, the term from the predicate, biology, is brought down and we can assume that living things, because biology is the study of living things, is a synonym for biology. So that's been brought down to become the subject of a new sentence. And this is a, these two are very important patterns of how scientists tie information together. That's why science writing is so dense with information. I'm gonna ask you to complete underlining the subjects with red, the predicates with blue, and finding any of these ideas that drop from sentence to sentence, which create cohesion in the paragraph. So our review. This is a literacy lesson to support students' ability to recognize the Peel paragraph pattern in science. The Peel pattern can be analyzed for the central theme of the paragraph by recognizing terms that are repeated as the subject or terms from a predicate that become the subject of future clauses. In this lesson, student read about the chemical elements that make up living things, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. These elements are organized into molecules and living things. And as you know, those molecules are often monomers or small molecules which join together to make large molecules called macromolecules or polymers. Thank you so much for your attention and hard work.